Game Masters for the RPG Alliance, Keith Johnson, and he's running Conad the Barbarian. Yeah. Keith, I know you are, I would say, and I don't know if you agree with it, a Conad expert, an aficionado. How did you get into Conad? So, I come to Conan initially from 1982 classic film Conan the Barbarian, obviously. I watched the movie a lot, like a lot, a lot. Um, <laughs> I never really read the comic books and I hadn't read any of Howard's stories at that point in time. When they released Momoa's Conan in 2012, quote me on the date, but it's around there. Mm -hmm. I wanted to compare it to Robert E. Howard's writings, Conan proper, versus comparing it directly to the 82 film. So I got a audiobooks from Audible and I fired in Conan the Barbarian from Robert E. Howard, which is the audiobook of this. Mm -hmm. And I listened to the short stories before I went and rolled through the movie, and so that got me into Robert e. Howard, and I continued going from there, essentially. How did you get into Modiphius Entertainment's Conad the Barbarian 2D20 system? Because that's what you're running, and that's what we're super excited about. So I just recently got back into gaming, mostly into wargaming at that point in time. I hadn't really started playing RPGs yet. I've had a few people approach me because I knew I had played them in the past, but I was like, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I don't care. Um, Kickstarter was a big thing. I love Kickstarter. I spent way too much money on it, but that's okay. You make me spend way too much money on it. Yay, Solomon me. Kane. Yay! So, <laughs> <laughs> so Thank we you. do the max. Okay. Do it all. Spend it all. You want it all. You only get one chance. Uh, so, when Modiphius was going to release Conan, the role-playing game based on Robert E. Howard's original writing, no pastiche stuff, the previous versions like uh, Mongooses, mm -hmm. which is really popular, lots, lots of people, and they did a lot of stuff for it, which we all got copies of with the PDFs when you got your Modiphius back, which was awesome. Um, I wanted to get involved, and so I did. I jumped on, and I grabbed my my pledge, and they had they had pledges for, for you to get art in the book, so you could have like a character in there, they were expensive, so I was like... I can't, I can't do it. My friends tried to convince me it was worth the money because so at one time you'd be part of the part of the Conan book and I was like, no, no, no. Too much dinero. No, no, exactly. It was just too much money. And you didn't get enough of the stuff that I wanted with it, enough of the books. So I, I, didn't, I didn't do it. I went and got my own pledge that was all the books, all the PDFs, that kind of stuff. So <laughs> that was awesome. So I got all those. Um, and then my friends surprised me. They, they bought me uh, an art pledge for one of the supplement books, because the other ones for the main book were all gone. Um, but that one, someone canceled their pledge on the main art book, on the on the core book, uh -huh. and so they they were watching and they 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 jumped onto it, oh, and good. so they switched over to the core book for me, which was like one of the coolest things my friends have ever done for me. They all like pulled their money and put this like eight hundred dollar pledge or whatever stupid so amount of money. You're not it was. only on the backer page, you now have a yeah, character. Yeah, I've got a character character in the book. You are now part of Conan lore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's awesome. Yeah. So it's very cool. Keith, I can't thank you enough because your Starship and Steel's blog and YouTube channel had so many helpful tips and hints on how to learn Conan 2D20. And also you do a lot of stuff about how to make your own terrain and scenery and just tips and tricks on how to add homebrew stuff to your game. Talk a little bit about your blog and all the other things you have on there. So when I started getting back into gaming, I started you know, doing some how to build stuff, like some 15 millimeter stuff on there. I have a big boat build on there. Um, I had started watching, when I got back into terrain, I had started watching guys like uh, DM Scotty, and that turned into you know guys like that, and then uh, Brandish Gilhelm over at Runehammer. He's a cool dude, and uh, over in Winnipeg, we got Black Magic Craft right now. We just did a, a interview with CBC. He was super oh, stoked about that. Cool. So a good Canadian boy, doing some good stuff there. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to give back a little bit to the community. Like my channel's nothing like compared to those ones. I got like 730 subscribers as of this morning. Yay! Yay. That's more than I thought I would ever get, though. Mm -hmm. um, but YouTube is intensive when it comes to filming and editing and getting on there. As I'm sure you'll, you know, after doing a couple of these. Uh, so I, I do a lot more on the actual blog because it's easier to write an article and put it up. And I can do that generally once or twice a week. So I get a lot more content on there. 
And like you said, there's all kinds of stuff on there. Board gaming stuff, there's Conan stuff, there's comic book reviews these days because Marvel just reacquired Conan and started doing new Conan titles. So now I'll piss off all the Conan fans because <laughs> Savage Avengers is awesome and it's got lots of new people involved and interested in the story. Mm -hmm. So in Savage Avengers, they've taken the Punisher and Elektra and a bunch of the other Marvel characters that are badasses and they've tied them into the Conan story and they've brought Conan forward and so they're fighting all these, these bad guys like the Hand and stuff like that. So it's pretty neat, pretty cool. I mean, totally not canon at all, but <laughs> nothing after Howard is canon anymore, so. Yeah, and DC brought Wonder Woman in with Conan too. Yes, they did, that was actually with Dark Horse, but yes. Dark Horse, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they did, uh, right before Marvel reacquired, they did a Wonder Woman Conan, and they did a, uh, and then Dark Horse and Dynamite did a Conan Red Sonja crossover as well. Oh, right. So, yeah. You have a love of the fantasy genre, and you do medieval recreation, don't you? Yeah, so when I was 18 years old, we had, uh, I had stopped playing RPGs and I would started playing war games and I had friends that still played RPGs at the college at that point in time. Mm -hmm. We had a couple come up from Vancouver and moved up, they were foresters and they moved up, back up to Prince George and they wanted to, they had played it a long time ago, this medieval game they, mm -hmm. that we're going to talk about. And they wanted to restart it in, in Prince George because there was no, that's where, where I'm from. That's where... Uh, hey, my dad lives there. Hey! Hey, Prince George, yeah. PG! Yeah, I don't know if I'll say that, but you know, I lived there for a long time. Uh, so but, so they, they wanted to start their... Their, their thing. So they went to this, this RPG club that my friend was at and they, you know, told him to bring his friends over and blah blah blah. So we, I went to the next time and they brought like some chain mail and stuff um, and like the weapons they used gave us a video of a little, uh, of, like an event that took place in Clinton, BC, mm -hmm. which is like five hours south of Prince George. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's pretty big at that point in time. It was a pretty big event. And so we'd go to that and I got involved in this, this game this medieval game called the Society for Creative Anachronism, SCA.org. And it, I mean, it consumed a lot of my life. I stopped playing RPGs and I stopped playing. But there's part of the reason, there's a reason. Part of the reason was I didn't have time and part of the reason was I didn't, I, I lost the concept of make believe being playing a fighter if I could go and hit people with sticks for real. And I had more fun doing that. <laughs> so so I went and did that and I got pretty good at it. Uh, and it's been it's been fun and I've learned a lot of cool skills and I met all of my really good friends in my life right now are through that organization. So it's been it's been a really good thing, really positive thing for me. Thanks Keith for being one of our founding game masters for the RPG Alliance Con and we're gonna be there with you this year at October 20th at Dickens Pup. It's the RPG Alliance Convention, CONAD with Keith Johnson, and you better be there by Crom. Crom, Crom doesn't care, but we do, so come on by. Come on by tabletopevents.com, get your badges, and we'll see you at the con.